Good morning, top of the morning to you. We are on our uh, St. Patrick's Day special. So this entire episode is going to be in Gaelic, right? Angela, <laughs> with exactly. That. Yes, yes. <laughs> Aaron Go Bra and all those kind of fun stuff. <laughs> so moving on from that, we, we obviously won't be going down that path. But if you recall, when you watched last, West, last week's episode, which I am sure that you did, um, we sort of mentioned toward the end that this week we were going to talk about, do you need a website? So I'm, I'm going to let, I have an opinion. I have a very strong opinion, but I'm going to let Angela lead us off on this one. So I don't go down the rabbit hole too quickly. Um, but I promise I'll get, I'll get it in there. So Angela, do we need uh, a website? Um, yes, you do. I mean, that's the short answer. Okay, let, me give you the, <laughs> let me, let me give you the long answer and some context. I, I did a speaking event and ha, huh, it was, it was with realtors. And I mean, these were serious top end realtors. And the question came up in the Q&A, you know, websites are becoming so static. You know, they really aren't as interactive as they, you know, are they seriously still important? Do I still need a website? And that question, first of all, I don't build websites, so I don't have any, I don't have a horse in the race. Um, but it really made me stop and think, you know, I'm a person that built my entire business my first eight years without a website using free LinkedIn. So that question really gave me pause. And, you know, if it's a beginning entrepreneur, uh, you know, I might tell them, don't stress about the website your first year, just get some clients. Um, but you, I think, you know, these days with SEO and link strategies and all that sort of thing, I think to establish credibility, you still need to have a website. A lot of people complain about, you know, oh, if I have a website, I have to keep it up to date. And that's so much trouble. <laughs> and I'd love to hear your opinion. On <laughs> number one, when is it absolutely necessary for you to have a website? And I was talking with an attorney last night at a, a networking event, and the same question came up. And for attorneys, I really do think they have some credibility responsibilities and they need to have a website to show that they're legit. Number two, when should you get a website? If you're just starting out as an entrepreneur, you know, when does it become essential for you to have a website? And then number three, how does it play into the whole SEO findability formula? So my response to all that is don't build on rented land. And what I mean by that is, so, you know, if, if you have a static website, you're not doing your job. So it's that simple, right? Because the reason why you have a static website is you are of the misconception that you can build it, leave it, and they will come. That's not how <laughs> marketing works. Marketing is about engaging your audience, which means that you have to come up with content on a regular basis, which I will concur is, you know, for a, a small entrepreneur, that's just one more task on the top of many, um, you know, but we write content for a living. So, you know, you can hire us, but, you know, the reality is there's plenty of platforms where you can share content. LinkedIn, as you mentioned, is a great place to share content. The problem with all of that is that you can't control it. You don't have the ability to decide what LinkedIn decides through its algorithms or through whatever it chooses to do. It feels like showing. So for instance, we, you know, we were pretty active on Facebook years ago, a long time ago, where when we posted stuff on Facebook, Facebook, it was seen. And I believe now that with the algorithms on Facebook, only about 2% of your audience will ever see the content that you post, right? So the reality is you can't control it. The other thing is, and, and I can attest to this from firsthand experience, I have been kicked off and banned and bounced and all those types of things from a variety of platforms. Um, one of our first businesses, we pretty much built on Yahoo groups. 
and so I'm aging myself, but we, we pretty much built on Yahoo groups and we had a following of something like 20,000 followers in this Yahoo group. So it was a very focused group. We got a, a tremendous amount of traction and somewhere along the way, one of our members posted something that was considered offensive and it was reported, right? So it was, you know, and Yahoo took down our group. Okay, there was no appeal in it. There was, I don't think there was anyone to email. Like it was just like gone, right? Uh, you know, with the, you have violated terms of service. So we, as the, you know, the managers of the group hadn't done it. It was a member within the group who posted something that someone took offense to. Um, rightfully so, but, but you know, nonetheless. So our audience of 20,000, you know, followers was gone. Zero overnight, people, right? We had no other way of reaching them because they, our primary contact was through this Yahoo group. So it was just gone, right? And anyone who's been on the internet for any length of time, we have no idea when they when you get that magic, you have violated terms of service. It's like, what the hell did I do? I don't think I did anything, but they, you know, LinkedIn will do it to you. Twitter will do it to you. Facebook literally will do it to you. Um, so number one, don't build build on rented land. That's not to say you shouldn't use these platforms and leverage these platforms to drive traffic back to your website. But with your website, you control the messaging, right? You control what you want to convey to your audience when it's conveyed. So for us, it, we think it's too dangerous to rely on someone else's platform, especially when we're not going to get a whole lot of visibility as a result. Um, however, if we just build our website and don't leverage all those platforms, people will never find us. So you have to combine them, but you still need, you know, your own place. Part of it is, like you said, for the law firms, if you don't have a website, people question, like, are you real? Um, <laughs> I have a, a lot of clients that when we're building their website, they're like, I don't want to show my address. I don't want to give my phone number. I don't want people calling me. And I'm like, you're a business. Okay. Transparency, you know, it, you know, like my smartphone tells me when it's uh, a telemarketer, so I just don't answer it. So, like, the, we have technologies can, that can screen people out if that's your genuine concern. Um, but you know, for transparency purposes, your website should have your phone number. Your website should have means to which we can contact you. Um, and this is part of the legitimacy that you mentioned, like especially like with a law firm. Um, People expect you to a have. physical address, a physical address. Right. Right. Um, because if I am, you know, if it's an e-commerce platform, for sure, I want to know that there's a phone number I can reach someone and an address where I can reach someone. Um, you know, I, I have a hundred stories with all these kind of craziness, but I, I, you know, had, I placed an order online because it seemed like too good to be true. And every time something's too good to be true, it bites me in the butt. But, you know, so I placed an order with a company and, you know, I'm not a big fan of Amazon Prime, but at least I know with Amazon Prime, my stuff's going to show up, right? So I placed an order with this website that was not Amazon Prime, that it was a private small company. Um, and it had a 202 area code, which would suggest that it's out of, the, you know, on the East Coast, right? That it's, I believe that's DC. Um, um, but of course the call then, you know, if you call this 202 number, which I did numerous times because I was having problems, um, cause my package never showed up, you know, I was then rerouted to a, uh, you know, a, a company in India, a call center in India. Right? So, you know, part of the legitimacy is, you know, if you're going to pretend to be a U.S. company and the phone's answered by a call center somewhere else, we know better. Right. And then the package was supposedly stuck in China. You know, so, but I went around and around with this company, you know, and clearly there were some transparency issues as to they were, you know, their website said they were in Florida, their phone number said they were in DC, and yet I'm getting routed to India to get a package out of China. So, you know, those types of concerns. Um, I, the other thing is, you know, having your own website. This is an opportunity for you to be creative so you can just style it and, and create it the way that you want. Um, but it's a tremendous amount of work. I, I will acknowledge that because we do it for a living and we're busy. But, um, you know, if you're going to build it that, you know, I'll ask people, why are you building this thing? 
And if you're not prepared or committed to adding content on a regular basis, and that means that at a minimum weekly, don't even bother. You know, so no, you don't need a website if you're not going to maintain it. Right. Yeah, so in answer to your so question, do you need a website? The answer is yes, but no, if you don't plan on, you know, keeping it up and, and adding content to it, because then you're just, you know, the initial effort will be wasted because no one will ever see your website. Um, but I think if you're a legitimate business, then you do need a website and you do need to make sure that you update your content on a regular basis. But, you know, any business that's growing and, and out there marketing will have new content, you, you know, things to, to convey to your clients and things like that. Um, and it's just, in my mind, it's just too dangerous to rely on platforms like Facebook or LinkedIn to, you know, maybe share my messaging if they feel like it. The alternative is I can pay to play because, it's, you know, if I want to share my messaging on Facebook, I can. I just need to pay because that's the only way that they're going to show it. And, and and then as well, it's only a percentage of your audience. Oh, so I have two really quick questions, Mike, sure. and then I'll let you continue no, answering no, no, no. My, <laughs> my three questions. So I know that one of the best uses of LinkedIn is driving traffic to websites. So I think what we're talking about here is a much more comprehensive strategy to get these different platforms to work together for you. Uh, because I know 52% of all website traffic um, from social media comes from LinkedIn. So driving traffic with a specific goal in mind to your website is probably a great way to get more eyeballs on your website. And if you're publishing weekly on LinkedIn, this is the second part of the question, is there a specific length of content that seems to catch the attention of Google or whatever other search there is to find your website? You know, is it more than 500 words? Is it 1500 words? Yeah. So, I mean, the the answer to that question depends on the platform, right? Um, because I know that as a rule, Google wants to see a minimum of 500 words. Because if, you know, what Google is looking for, Google is looking for what they call eat, right? Have you heard that before? I have not. Okay. Um, and then, of course, now that I don't remember what. <laughs> I can't remember what the E is. So we're going to have to look that up really quick because I don't remember what the E is, but it's authority and trust. So we'll have to go figure out what the E is for an EAT. Um, and it's just horrible. I don't know what EAT stands for. Not engagement, is it? It could be. Um, expertise, authority, and trust. So... Okay. What Google is looking for is eat, expertise, authority, and trust, that you are providing valuable information. And in Google's mind, and I, I don't know that I necessarily disagree with that, I think it's pretty hard to convey, you know, expertise, authority, and trust in a 200 word, you know, blog post. There's just not enough there to do that. So I think part of eat is, you know, at a minimum needs to be 500 words because you're really not getting into the meat of anything beforehand. Then there's, you know, if you get into SEO, there's other things like there should be reference links and there should be, you know, outsourced links and in, inbound links, a whole bunch of other things. But this whole idea of, should be a minimum of 500. I would like to step back a little further than the website question and ask, what is our primary objective in marketing? Um, to tell people exactly what problem you solve. Okay. It wasn't where I was going, but sure. Right. It, you know, part of this is to convey who we are. Um, we're big fans of the old value proposition. So, you know, what problem do we solve? What is our solution? What are the benefits that you can expect as a result of, you know, what differentiates so, us? What differentiates? So that's all the value, you know, is, so our messaging and our marketing should convey our value proposition, right? But what we ultimately want, whether it's through social media, whether it's through 
our website or whatever we're trying to do is we want to make a connection. Relationship building. Right. And part of making the connection is I, I want you to trust me enough to share information with me so that when I have something really valuable that I think is important, I can share it back with you. What I'm talking about is I want your email. That's what I'm looking <laughs> for. <laughs> Bottom line. And, well, and you know what a big proponent I am of owning your own email list. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. I am just, I am just if so. If you send me your business information on a Gmail account, yeah, don't, don't go there. <laughs> That's a, we'll have a, we'll have a, a whole episode on using Gmail as your business, you know, the bottom line, if you want to skip that video, don't do that. <laughs> so, but the reality is what we want is we want your email because ideally what I want to be able to do is to reach out to you sometime in the future, probably very soon to reach out to you in the future and like, Hey, look, this is what's going on. This might be of interest to you. This is what we're selling this week. This is the deal, whatever it is that I'm trying to promote. I want to share with you. I obviously need to do it in a way that's not spammy. I need to do it in a way that provides value to you, all those other things. But bottom line, I want your email. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know, we do some work around pitch decks and, you know, everybody tries to share every piece of information about their company in the pitch deck. <laughs> like, yeah, that's kind of overkill and not that interesting. So what we're trying to do with the pitch deck is to generate interest. What we're trying to do when we collect you know, when we were out marketing is to generate enough interest in what we're doing that you trust us and are willing to share your email to learn more, right? So that's what the holy grail is. So the problem is when I'm making these relationships and networking with these folks on a platform like LinkedIn, I don't have their email, right? I, if I'm a first connection, I can look it up and I can get their email. But if it's, you know, if I'm just posting it, if I'm posting in a group on LinkedIn, I have nobody's email. I have no way of connecting these to these people. And if I, for whatever reason, get kicked out of the group or move on to somewhere else, I have no direct way of touching these people and connecting with these people. So the bottom line, well, and, what we're trying I'm to do is collect Just for a second, when I work with people on rebuilding their profile, more than half of them don't have the correct email address on LinkedIn. So many times that is not the best method for capturing their emails. Well, but, and some people, and uh, I do this too. I mean, I have a bunch of emails that I use to fill out forms, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know that email. Yes. Right. Yes. So a lot of people will use an email for the, you know, the very purpose of not getting email, right? You require them to sign up for something. They use an email they know they never check or they don't care about, right? So that person doesn't trust you. So that person is not giving you an email that's valuable. Um, you know, so we want to convey enough information. We want to have, you know, this E concept of expertise, authority, and trust so that you do feel comfortable with us, right? And then it's our responsibility as marketers and as businesses not to violate that trust, right? I shouldn't start spamming you. I shouldn't start, you know, ask, sending you ask, messages ask, that aren't ask. relevant to what you signed up for. Um, you know, I should respect the opt-ins that you've chosen. If you don't want to get a text, I shouldn't be texting you, those types of things. So that's our responsibility is, is to make sure that we continue to deserve that trust by making sure that we don't do things that are questionable or, you know, not above board. Um, and then to go back to the email on the website, the website is going to create that trust, right? We're going to share information with you. We don't, as a rule, and this is just us, so other websites do it differently, but as a rule, we're not the hardcore sellers, buy, 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 buy. What we do is we share information that we think is relevant around the audience that we work with and, you know, sort of convey to them, here's what we do, here's how we think, um, so that if you like and are aligned with that, you probably want to come work with us, right, and, and hire us or do whatever it is that we do. Um, and that's the role of our website is to convey, um, you know, that value to you as our customer. 
So like, so, did I answer any of the three questions? <laughs> it, yes, you did. Okay. Um, Just check. You never know. I do have a question. You know, what if you're a speaker? I mean, a paid professional speaker. How important is a website for that? Well, I mean, you know, my answer is pretty much going to be the same. I think a website's important, right? Um, the 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 value of the website for a speaker is I can promote my future events. I can, um, you know, create that was credibility of where I've spoken before, and you know, so I I've been, um, you know a speaker at conferences and a moderator and things like that. So when I do one of those and it goes up online, then I'll reference like, oh, here's me moderating this conversation. And look, no one's sleeping, so I must have done a good job. But this is a way for me to demonstrate, you know, some of my past work. You know, this is my work example, right? So I put this on my website. Like these are, you know, here's where I've spoken before. Here's where I've given presentations. Here's where I was a moderator. And this shows and hopefully builds towards my expertise, authority, and trust, right? Because you can see me speaking in another platform. So if you want to hire me as a guest speaker, you already have you have an opportunity to see what I do in real life versus like, you know, this guy has never spoken before or he's a horrible speaker. Right. Um, right. And I've well, given and, horrible speeches, trust me. So and we don't put them on the web. We where you've spoken before kind of gives people an idea of the flavor of the topics that you talk about and the audiences that you want to speak with, you know, and, and, and there's it, a built in credibility, right? If, if, yes. I, if I am speaking, you know, and I haven't, but if I am speaking at, um, what's the big speaking platform that everyone wants the TED, Ted talks, right? So, Ted talks. you know, if, if I've made it to Ted, then clearly, you know, that's, you know, that's a credibility, right, that I've spoken to Ted, or if I've made it to a big conference or something like that. So part of this is just the fact that I've spoken at, you know, Mobile Worldcom or something like that. It will, it will demonstrate that, you know, I have a certain amount of credibility because these people hired me, um, you know, versus, you know, if I send you a, one of my local podcasts and you're like, eh. <laughs> he's in his room talking to himself, who cares? Yeah, so there's a credibility like if I'm appearing on a, on a bigger platform and, and, you know, in a bigger audience. So, you know, for me, this is my past work experience. So we're going to share that on our website. Um, and that will get, you know, if I if I, I can share that on LinkedIn, and I do share that on LinkedIn, but it will get buried, right? Because I have, you know, it's only going to, people are only going to see it if they happen to be logged in at the time that I posted and 1,200 other messages don't come through at the same time and bury it. Right. right, right. So, but to help them find what they're looking for, your website is much more golden. Well, ideally, my website is much more targeted and focused because it's about you know what we do versus you know LinkedIn is a business platform, so anybody who's doing business is is competing with the for the eyeballs, right? Um, oh, it's, there's so much noise on LinkedIn these days. Yeah, and. I, the algorithms have just changed again. They <laughs> they use a different focus for the algorithms all the time. And right now it's really based on that initial interest. So they're going back to initial engagement. So rather you have than to follow the, somebody in order to see what they're doing. Um, well, your post will get more traction if you get some initial engagement with it. So right, right. if I posted thing right now and you liked it or commented on it then it's going to get circled around again right. and the more people that so, like it the more they share it because it, it you know it you know it shows the authority because you know seven people liked it 200 people like this and then you know they show more and more um and, yeah because i'll get the the email from linkedin where like oh your post is doing really well you you know this qualifies you to be shared with linkedin news or something michael like that. yeah are you gone? 